Hey, what's up, Jacek from Filmmakers VFX Guide here. So today I'm going to show you how Zach King and other creators do that weird camera projection on the ground when then they move the camera and it suddenly becomes an object. I mean, you'll see what I mean in a second. But other than being a cool party trick, it's actually quite useful technique if you want to remove something from your footage, especially if the camera is moving in 3D. So it's actually not that easy to remove object from such footage. So I am talking about the camera projection or camera mapping. I've seen a few names for that. A full disclaimer, I didn't come up with the technique. I've seen it actually quite a few years back on Ren Weichmann's video. He's from Corridor Digital and they actually use this technique on a few of their videos. Before we begin, there are quite a few tricks to make it work. So first of all, how you film your object is important. So you first have to think about where your object is going to be projected. So for example, if you want your object or a person to be projected only on the floor, Make sure you film it from a little bit of a higher angle. The reason is if you move the camera and that object crosses another, for example, vertical plane, like a wall, you will have a quite a rough time removing that object. It is possible, but it gets complicated when you do that. So as far as preparation, step one, think about how your projection is going to look. Step two, make sure to film accordingly. After you do it a few times, you're going to get a hang of what's going to cause you problems or not. Uh, from my experience, a few tips. This effect heavily relies on After Effects ability to do a proper camera tracking. This means make sure you have as few reflective surfaces as possible. So that in itself is also helpful with when you change your position, the reflective surface will change their brightness slightly. So again, the less reflective surface, the better. And of course, the more rough it is, the easier it is to track. Also, make sure it, there is no really defined pattern on the floor. This could work if the track was super perfect, but from my experience, it rarely is. So the more you can see like defined lines that, that are running throughout your floor or the wall that you're going to project on, the tougher it will be to basically keep these lines aligned. So it will drift a little bit. So that could be a problem. So yeah, let's jump into After Effects and see how it's done. Here's the footage we're going to use and take a look at how I filmed this. As you can see, we obviously have a floor, which is a horizontal plane. And then we have a vertical plane, which are these cupboards. As you can see, a head of this dude never crosses this line. Same as with this plane right here in the back. That way, it's way, way easier to do this technique. So let's grab our footage and create a new composition. So the way this technique works is just like a projector. So we have to create a projecting surface, which we will do by creating a solid layer. This will be our canvas. And then we create a film strip out of our footage and suspend it in 3D space and then project a light onto our canvas. I know it may sound complicated, but it's really not that much. So the first step is obviously add 3D camera tracker. And I'm going to check detailed analysis. So now that it's done, click your camera tracker and pick some points on the floor. As you can see, this part right here looks really good. So right click on this, create a solid and the camera. So the first thing we want to do is change this solid to be white. And the reason for it is after we project our footage on that layer, it will change color if it's not white. So, so go to layer, solid settings and change it to white. Now we can resize the solid. So make it quite big so it covers all of your subject and a little behind it so the projection will fit right in. Let's turn it off for now. Okay, so now we want to pick a frame after which our projection will become a real footage. So let's say I'm going to pick this one. Make sure to mark it with a marker because we don't want to lose that frame. It's really important. Now, 
we want to right click new and create a light. It should be point light and make sure to select cast shadows. That's it. So now we want to put our light exactly where our camera is. So select both, press P to show position. So what we could do is copy each of these individually or a quicker way, click the pick whip and you can see right here it says hold shift to move layer to the location of the parent. So that's what we're going to do, hold shift and release the button. Now it says 0, 0, 0, but that's because if it's parented, its position is relative to the parent. So all we have to do is select none, and now we have exactly the same position. So now we want to duplicate our layer, right click, time, and freeze frame. We can remove the camera tracker from it and make this layer 3D. So now we have this, and it's basically a film strip floating around the 3D space. So now we want to copy the position from our light to our film strip. I'm going to rename it because that's basically all it is. So now you can kind of see it in 3D space. After you zoom out, you can see it's kind of in an awkward position, but this doesn't matter. Let's get back and select the top view. So I'm going to turn off the camera temporarily to better see what we're doing. And as you can see, we have our light over here and our film strip. So what we want to do is move it a little bit back. It doesn't really matter how far it is. So let's turn on the camera and we want to rotate it in such a way that it's perpendicular to the camera. One more thing we need to scale down this film strip really low. So maybe to like 3%, could be less, we'll see. Let's go to active camera. And now you can see this film strip is right here. So we can adjust it from this view in such a way that this roughly covers our view. So let's scale it down a little more. And oh boy, that's a bad angle. Let's change the orientation. So we can easily move it. Ah, there we go. We can switch back to the original axis mode and then rotate it. There we go. Okay, that, that is good enough. So now we want to use the corner pin effect so we can precisely fit in in our view. Go to maximum zoom, upper left, and select upper left corner. Upper right, there you go. So now you can see that it's in 3D space in front of our light. And this is our projector. So let's turn on our solid. Click our film strip, double click A to reveal material options. Turn light transmission to 100% and cast shadows to only. And now you can kind of see what we're doing. But one more thing, go to our solid, double click A and turn on accept lights to off. And now we can select a pen tool and do a mask around our projection. But also we need to make sure that it covers our object. As you can see, if that object would be crossing this line, this wouldn't really work that great. So we would have to do some additional steps. So yeah, that looks okay, I guess, but why is it so pixelated? So the thing is, After Effects has a resource limit set on shadows. So what it means is the shadows won't be the highest quality possible, but we can force it to be by clicking here on Renderer. Make sure to click on 3D Renderer Options and Shadow Map Resolution. Pick 4000, OK and OK. As you can see, now we have a really nice quality. Let's do a little bit of 
feathering on our mask. As you can see right here, um, because of the vignette and a little bit of the Fresnel effect, don't bother with it if you don't know what it is. But because this floor is a little bit reflective, you can kind of tell uh, there is some color shift. So maybe you want to start this footage from here. So we don't show anyone this part or you can keyframe, for example, color correction to match it. We can try to do that. So let's say curves, make a keyframe, put it somewhere over here and try to match it. Yeah, maybe like this. Yeah, so that, that works. So now let's go to this frame and everything is happening on that plane. If this plane doesn't exist, there is no effect. So all we have to do, we can Alt and close bracket on this frame. And after that frame, our effect will be gone. And boom. And it's super smooth because it's the exactly same frame that we are projecting from. So one more thing about these patterns, so you can kind of see what would be the issue here if this was, a, for example, a perfect checkerboard. It would be visible if it even drifted for one pixel and you can't really tell right here. So that's that's helpful. OK, that's cool and all. But how do you remove an object from a footage using this technique? So it's actually quite simple. What you can do is, by the way, I already deleted our film strip. We won't need it anymore. You can keep rolling your camera and take out your subject from the frame and film an empty frame for a while. Then you do the exact same tracking, but the frame you'd be projecting would not be this one, but the one after you removed your subject. So what it would do is project an empty image onto our floor layer. I hope that's clear. But there is another way. You can go, for example, to uh, your marker and important thing, change it to full because we're going to use the FX console to grab a screenshot and it's unfortunately relying on that drop down. So take a screenshot, export, save to PNG, name it film strip and open the file in Photoshop. Now you can use the selection tool, whichever one you want, and now go to edit, fill and content aware. Add, deselect, voila. So now you can save it and open After Effects and import your film strip. So now what you have to do is go to this frame and it should match exactly. But we have to make a projection out of it. So our film strip. So make the layer 3D, go to your point light, copy the position and copy it over to your film strip. As you can see, it's again gigantic. Go to top view and rotate it again. So it's just in front of the camera. Scale it down to 2% and go to active view again and rotate it. So it will fill our frame again. You don't have to be exact and add the corner pin effect. If you don't remember, I'm using the middle mouse button to grab and move our view. It's really handy. And here is our film strip. Again, double click a change a light transmission to 100% and cast shadows to only. Now we have to make sure our background is visible and there you go. Again, the less reflective your floor is, the better the effect will be. There will be no light changes just like here. So watch out for that. And now we have our subject appearing from thin air. Boom. So let's maybe try to warp him in gradually, like through a teleport or something. I don't know. 
So because this effect heavily relies on this layer being there or not, all we have to do is create a mask on this specific layer. Let's turn down the opacity so we can see what we're doing. Let's start with nose and change this mask to subtract. Reveal all properties, change path and expansion, increase the feather a little bit, turn down the expansion, go a few frames forward, increase the expansion to zero and start revealing your subject with a mask. Go a few frames forward and then get back and create another mask exactly the same way. Do the same thing. Change the opacity 200% and in the end make it real big to make sure you removed the whole content aware field layer. Yeah. And like I said, this is just a principle. Uh, you can use it however you want. You can animate the opacity from 100 to zero to make it look like it teleported, add all kinds of bells and whistles to it. So yeah, that's how you do it. So if you wanted to project it also on the wall, so it looks like, like this, all you would have to do is make sure that on the frame that you picked, your subject will be crossing visually over that wall and then create a projection plate. So the uh, your solid in the 3D space on that wall, then make sure your both plates are meeting exactly at the edge where your floor meets your uh, wall. And then that's it. So if you're interested in learning more, I created an After Effects course dedicated for filmmakers. Uh, you can learn about it in the link below. I also created an After Effects mini course for total beginners. So if you're not sure if you want the full course yet, but you want to try out the mini course, the link will also be in the description below. So that's it. Hit me up with any questions you may have and I'll see you in the next one.